This is game number two of the best of three semi-finals. I'm Maddles, it's the ESL Pro Series summer season and well, Overgrowth is going to be the host of this. Sporting to the top right, the red Protoss player. Representing Mouse Sports, we have Hasselwobs. And his opponent down to the lower left, the blue Protoss. 1-0 up in this best of three, it's showtime. Showtime played game 1 ace, he got a lot of early pressure, lost a natural nexus pretty badly, pretty early on. But he fought back, he made a decisive strike, dropping some immortals, blinking on top of Hasselob's army, and then counter-attacked. It was like a real lie there. Um, I, was gonna make a, I was gonna make a Game of Thrones reference, but I realised it'd be a pretty big spoiler uh, for the second to last episode of the most recent ones, and some of you may not have watched it. So I'm being good. I'm not going to be that guy that spoils Game of Thrones for someone. And if anyone comments or leaves a message in chat that spoils Game of Thrones, I will ban you. Like, I will just instant- I will stop casting and just be like, ban. And everyone will understand because no one should spoil Game of Thrones. We've all got that friend, haven't we? Or that person we know who's read all the books. And is like, oh, so where are you up to in the TV series? And they're like, oh, so- so you don't know that this has happened yet. And you're like, what are you doing? You know I haven't read it. Why are you telling me? And then you just get really cross. And you don't know if they're telling the truth or not. And once they know that it winds you up, they just keep doing it. God, we all hate people like that. Anyway, enough about hatred. More about the love of StarCraft. We've got two gases down for both of these two players. Two probes in each gases for the moment. Although Showtime going up to three in each. So is Hasselhobs though. They're mirroring each other. This is all good. Still waiting to see for any variation. Every game I hope for the legendary DT on DT play. Both players opening Dark Templar is just a beautiful thing. Especially if neither make a sentry or detection, which, to be fair, at this level of play, they shouldn't. They should be prepared for the Dark Templars and will have a response to it. But that doesn't stop me hoping. And I mean really hoping. I mean... Cross my fingers, begging for it, because it is good when that happens. Anyway, Mothership Core coming down sentry on its way out as well. My stomach just grumbled so incredibly loudly, by the way. I don't even, my mic may have picked that up. That is how loud my stomach was just like, feed me! But no, it's all good. Um, you can't eat yet, stomach, not till we get through this. Anyway, probe coming out on a little adventure. Adventure probe. Not sure. Oh no, he's coming back from his adventure. I take that. Oh, wait. They've already scouted. Coming back now. Neither player taking expansion yet. Showtime. Just checking to make sure there's no proxies or anything. Stargate on his way out for Hasuobs. He's opening the same as last game. Uh, actually, no, he's not. Take that back. He's opening with the same tech, just minus two gateways. So a little mix up in the order of things. Going to be hitting a lot quicker. Will it be Phoenix? Will it be an Oracle? If I were a Protoss player, it would be Phoenix. I I personally feel that they're less risky. And long term, if controlled well, just have a higher threshold of what they can do. Meanwhile, Showtime, he's going for that Twilight Council. Going to be either going for Blink or potentially for some Dark Templar. And right on cue, Hasselhobs, he goes for those Phoenix. God, I love Phoenix. Phoenix play makes me so happy. I just think, as I said, it's got a really high skill ceiling. If they're controlled well, they can just be devastating. And I like that. I love it. It makes me... Mm, good. I feel like I'm kind of casting a cooking program right now. Otherwise, I was just like, mm, that's so good. Just, oh, delicious. These Phoenix. Nice dusking of Phoenix over, over your enemy's army. Just, mm, perfect. Anyway, hallucinate Phoenix coming through now. Going to get a little scalp. And to see, yep, that is indeed a Stargate. My opponent is definitely making some Phoenix, and that means he doesn't have detection! Whoa, Dark Shrine times. Makes me happy. So, I've now got my two favorite things I can ever see in PvP. DTs, and also Phoenix. But a blink follow-up to this. Okay, so it's not a massive commitment to those, to those Dark Templar. I mean, you know what, Hasuobs, you need some detection, mate. You need it. Get a robotics facility. Thank you. 
like he can hear me telepathically and he can't because obviously there's a big stream delay so it's not even like he's seen this or he's like oh okay just senses it like timings are good i like to think that he senses what i'm thinking not just he's a really really good player who's like of course he's going to be going for some dts or something i should get some detection Voidway coming through as well now, and the Phoenix was scouted. Actually, that's why the Robo was started, because the T-Shrine was spotted as well. This is like something, and if I tell you this, you'll notice it all the time. Casters really struggle with Dark Shrine. They want to say, like, DT Shrine, or Dark Templar Shrine, or or something else. I've forgotten what the other one is. Just saying Dark Shrine confuses most casters, especially if they're just in a steady flow of things. Anyway. Mothership Core, sneaking on by, but the Dark Templar coming in, the swipe of death, getting after quite a few kills, three kills on one DT, relatively nice one, the Observer nearly out, Mothership Core and Voidway chasing, is it going to get killed before he gets another kill, no four, five, come on get six DT, you can do it, six, seven kills on a Dark Templar, that is a very cost effective DT, racking up a hell of a load of damage there and also giving showtime, an ape worker lead. That is, that is sweet. Anyway, robotic facility now coming through for showtime as well. He's already got bling. Don't forget that. But he doesn't have many stalkers. Only two. Uh, can still try and chase down these phoenix that are busy having a little bit of fun time. As I hit the wrong button. No phoenix have died yet, although their production has ceased. Just the four to harass probe lines. The other thing that are really vulnerable to phoenix are, of course, sentries. They're light, so they take a heck of a lot of damage from them. And that can be some really good pickoffs because you do a huge amount of gas damage if you're able to get that kill there. Anyway, a little bit of a little bit of a lull in action. Um, oh, actually not. One Phoenix goes down there. Poor Phoenix. He died. It was a sad day for the Protoss over on House Orb's side. But nice little pickoff for Showtime. Whittling away the number of Phoenix, of course, is a great move. If you can get those out, you basically shut down the harassment and map control that they really give Hasselwobs. Bold move coming down from Showtime as well. He takes a third base nice and early on. And the reason that's a bold move is because should Hasselwobs decide to pull the trigger, hit the big red button, and come out as fighting, it can cause him some problems because this is a 400 mineral investment. Which means he's going to have to have cut a corner somewhere else. And that corner is just obviously not having void rays. That's the pretty big one. And he also doesn't have any immortals. So the big damage dealers against stalkers, not in Showtime's army. And he's really reliant on those stalkers as well. Going to the Templar Archives though, this is a nice choice. Uh, probably going to be for Archons. And Archons are really, really nice composition. So that Archon with plus two up against this kind of stalker busting force of immortals and void rays is great because void rays and Immortals are really not very good against Zealot Archon because they don't, well for a stop, the Void Rays don't deal bonus damage to either of those. The Immortals don't deal bonus damage to either of those and they still dish out a heck of a lot of damage and with Charge the Zealots can get all up close and personal and everything's nice in the world. Hasselwobs, he's adding in his third base as well now, that is roughly, well it was at least 80 seconds behind that of Showtime's. That's actually a really big amount, especially when Showtime is already up by a fair few probes. His income is going to be looking a lot more happy, a lot more steady in the next couple of seconds as those probes start digging in and getting a mining. The gas is getting taken as well. Really important in PvP, just because of how gas heavy these compositions start becoming. Showtime now. Uh, of course, he's got that Templar Archives done, warping in two Ar uh, High Templar in order to become an Archon. Plus two. Not yet finished, but it's making good progress, and that's up against the plus one of Hasselwobs. So a big upgrade lead, gonna be on the table for Showtime for quite a while. Quick little scout now, the Hallucinated Phoenix confirms that the third base has indeed been taken by Hasselwobs, but also confirms that Showtime was a heck of a lot further ahead. It also scouts out that Templar Archives. Really good pick up there, and a good bit of information coming down. Good number of Immortals in this composition. Uh, the stalker count very low on both sides. Instead they're favouring these much more expensive heavy units for the mid and late game. Dark Shrine coming in for Hasselwobs as well. Probably going to be aiming to get a little bit of Dark Templar harassment coming through. Maybe trying 
counter-attack Showtime if he does move out of position. Guessing he's something that can have a lot of success. He's Phoenix, racking up more kills. This is now 13 kills in total. Um, 4, 4, 2. So, yeah. 10 kills on those three Phoenix. That's really nicely going. Probably the one that died had three. Hallucinate Phoenix again checking around, seeing what's coming up. Plus two up against plus one. Both players upgrading to three and plus two there. So sticking to those upgrades nicely. Chrono Boost is going to be important. Still no sign of any aggression yet. Both instead are happy to sit back and enjoy their three base economy. Of which Hasswops is definitely caught up. Now at 63 probes to the 62 of his opponent. It's still producing. So this is going to be a very interesting mid game. 65 workers, fully saturated at all three bases now, uh, just one short actually, at the main base, but hey, they're both up at 60, oh sorry, Hassop's now gone up to 67, it'll be an interesting time now, probably won't see any moves out for a while, instead they'll want to max, definitely on Showtime side he'll want this plus three to be a thing before he goes for any engagement, and with plus three, he's going to be in a fairly strong position, actually. So, he's a long way ahead. He's about 146, 147 seconds ahead of that in-game. Over two minutes, window of opportunity to move out. Moving across the map now, he's at 158 supply. Really needs to hit this plus three timing. It's a big moment for Showtime. And Hasuobs being down in army supply by around 20 needs to be careful here this is a scary army and being up in army supply and also up in the upgrades with a similar composition it's scary there's four additional archons on the field for showtime who supply blocks has now that is actually quite important it may only be a couple of seconds but a couple of seconds can make all the difference plus three is active remember for showtime is he going to pull the trigger is he going to go for the throw and go for the kill. Hasuob sitting back, waiting for the moment, hugging up on that Nexus, wanting to use the Pokemon Overcharge to the max of its ability. A few more warp ins, another good 100 seconds in game before plus three triggers. This window, this opportune moment for Showtime to engage is just huge. In he goes now, he's maxed out, and the engagement's coming through. A good position to attack at the moment for Hasuob's but. We've got a lot of units down at the moment for Showtime. The Archons make those force fields pretty much irrelevant. Big trades coming on both sides, but Showtime coming off better. The plus three, the added army supply, the Zealots charging up on those Archons. He crushes through, takes a little bit of damage, but nowhere near enough. He dishes it out. Showtime wins the game, gets a 2-0 victory, and advances into the finals.